Siddharth Chatterjee, the UN resident coordinator in China, hit the headlines when his video of doing yoga in sub-zero temperatures went viral. He's made a four and a half minute documentary titled Breathing for Good Health on how to practice deep breathing. Siddharth Chatterjee is a decorated former Indian military officer. He served in the elite para SF regiment with postings in the Indian peacekeeping force in Sri Lanka and counterinsurgency operations in India's Northeast. He's on a mission to educate and encourage people to practice deep breathing exercises for stress relief and rejuvenation. And he joins me today from Beijing to discuss fitness and the benefits of breathing. Mr. Chatterjee, welcome to the News 9 Plus show. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you for having me on your show. You know, it's interesting. I met you for the first time in 2019 and I met you five years later and I, I, could, I couldn't recognize you the last time I saw you. You had literally, uh, you know, lost 20 kgs. Tell us about the story of your personal transformation through COVID. You know, let's start with what COVID did to us, uh, Sandeep. You know, it struck us like a bolt of lightning. And in that flash of that lightning, we really saw the contours of human health emerge and the fragility of human health, not just of human health, but health systems across the world. In fact, we thought the most developed countries had the most advanced health systems and look at the attrition, the morbidity and mortality we witnessed there. So I think, you know, COVID in many ways turned out also to be a great teacher. Now, prior to COVID, I was weighing about 85 kilos. I had hypertension with a systolic diastolic murmur of about, um, of about 160 by 90. Uh, I was on cholesterol medicine for close to 15 years, 30 milligram cholesterol tablets. I just felt, you know, unhappy with myself in, in the body I was living in. You know, I was constantly in a state of acute stress, which was kind of building up uh, over time. Even though I used to be very sporty, you know, uh, on an average, I would do a half marathon uh, every every week. But and not to mention that, you're a special forces officer. So, I mean, that must count for a lot. Well, you know, but after you give up all that, I, I, I took a premature retirement in 1996, December. So, you know, uh, you know, I moved on in life. And, you know, when life becomes one where you are, where you give up on, on, on your real practices and, and you just, you know, allow indulgence to, to overtake your life, I started falling sick very easily. For example, every year prior to 2020, I would, you know, get a flu, despite a flu vaccine, and I would be bedridden for about two weeks. And it was in 2020, I'd gone with a Kenyan delegation. I was that time the UN resident coordinator in Kenya to, to the Silicon Valley and then to Washington, D.C., very successful visit. And, you know, that morning I was supposed to leave for Nairobi, and I looked at myself in the mirror and I just felt that this is someone that I don't recognize and where I had come to in terms of being, you know, borderline obese, the state of, you know, uh, bad health, not feeling happy with myself, despite the fact it was a very consequential visit in terms of the UN-Kenya partnership. And I felt something had to change. So I was sitting at the lounge at the airport when I came across this gentleman called Wim Hof and his breathing practice. And that's when my curiosity got uh, got harnessed. And, you know, I, I read a little bit about fasting. So that morning I decided I did not have breakfast. And when I got onto the plane, it was a long flight via Dubai to Nairobi. I ate nothing. And from the following morning, and this was March of 2020, when I started to practice this. And it has been a journey. It didn't happen overnight. And what I realized is that the power of the breath, which which we call pranayama, and in China, it's a, it's the practice of Qigong, is so powerful that modern medicine has still not been able to tap into the real potential that lies within our breath, our ability to fast, our ability to be exposed to the cold, our ability to actually harness the 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 uh, the um, immune system within ourselves. And just for your for your uh, audience to know that in 1998 there was an American doctor that discovered nitric oxide. Now nitric oxide, for which he got the Nobel Prize is a signaling molecule in the cardiovascular system. Yes. It is what keeps our blood pressure normal, but it also prevents us from falling sick because it kills any virus or bacteria that can, comes in contact with it. So what's interesting is that our monks, the, in, in Indian history, this was well known, in Chinese history, it was well known, they knew there was something within our body which helps us to prevent from falling, uh, falling ill. Well, 
it all lies in our breath in our ability to really conquer our breath and when we conquer our breath you learn to manipulate your brain because the brain is your master yes. but once you learn to manipulate your brain you then start taking control of your health and life and you know ultimately you know in the words of herophilus who said right. that you know when health is absent wisdom cannot reveal itself art cannot manifest strength cannot fight wealth Absolutely. becomes useless and it all starts with it, it all starts with deep breathing but tell us uh, uh, mr uh, chatterjee how did you choose this uh, you know extreme uh, video to uh, raise awareness about breathing and pranayama and yoga how did this video come about so what happened was i've been practicing this and uh, and i noticed that you know in the past four years i have not fallen sick i did not get covid my son got covid here right. uh, i mean you know people around me my entire office got it and i didn't and uh, and but i was you know i was reading i was reading all the literature around it you know andrew huberman who's a neuroscientist at at, at stanford reading the books of uh, of uh, of uh, david sinclair on fasting who's at harvard so i was putting the science together and when i started to practice this i noticed that as i went more into the cold and challenged myself in the in inclement weather i noticed that my my body would actually adjust to it you know our body produces something called brown fat which we lose yes. in time i was able to resurrect it and bring it back in fact uh, sandeep i have a level of fitness which actually is slightly superior to what i had in this in the special person let me give you an example in 3 right. minutes I'm able to execute 100 push-ups and 55 pull-ups. I'm able to do a half marathon now in 1 hour and 20 minutes which I used to 1 hour and 40 minutes which I used to do in 2 hours and 10 minutes in Kenya. So there are dramatic changes which have taken place at the foundation of it is our breath. Over to you. Absolutely and uh, that's fascinating that you are today over 50 and you're fitter than what you were in the uh, special forces back in the day over uh, two decades ago that's absolutely fascinating to hear but you I'm know over 50 i'm 60 oh all right i, I couldn't tell <laughs> but mr chatterjee you know india is looking at a health emergency right now we have, people aren't eating right uh, we're not sleeping we are addicted to all kinds of screens uh, small and big what would be your advice to indians who want to follow your footsteps how can one become like siddharth chatterjee maybe not to the, the level of you know meditating and uh, breathing in the snow but how can one lead a healthy life what's your advice to indians who are watching you today what i am doing is can be done by anybody i am no exception sandeep please understand and let me emphasize that with every emphasis at my disposal anybody can do it but step number 1 is give up sugar right. the entire world has an addiction to sugar yes. refined sugar and that is what is a major cause for chronic diseases such as diabetes such as hypertension such as cardiovascular diseases it is leading to obesity everybody is getting more and more obese and you know we have a reward system yes. that you know you reward our children they do something good you give them chocolate if they if they are crying you give them chocolate little knowing yes. how much of damage we are we are doing to them you want to get old quickly consume as much of sugar as possible it's the fastest right. it is actually makes you age faster right. than consuming cigarettes but sugar is more addictive than yes. heroin so the first step is is your diet is to give up sugar combine that with breath breathing is very important so different forms of pranayama i do a very difficult type of breathing but i would suggest that people should go to the difficult part of breathing because it's like going to a gym when you pick up stronger weights your arms right. can become stronger Absolutely. so breathing is is key to that a third element is fasting you know we have lost the value proposition of fasting why because we are unable to control this guy which is right. which is what is known as the pavlovian response in biology yes. and we are addicted to food it's not it's not the need it's the greed for food we are programmed to eat breakfast lunch dinner right. last four years i have eaten one meal a day every right. six months i fast for five days water only every three months for three days water only every day i will eat in the evening in a window of 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the evening because i have many official functions to attend to but in between I would not be eating anything I would be consuming water why because our pancreas is producing insulin yeah. our body is in an insulin overdrive so over time we develop insulin resistance and therefore all the problems are diabetes and therefore we have to depend on companies like pharmaceutical companies like Novo Nordisk who provide insulin and then they become insulin dependent from external sources 
but the damage it is doing to the body is yes. extensive you know right but the issue is you can resurrect yourself in fact today as for the doctors here my biological age is around 30 my heart age uh, heart age is at around 20 so when I used to wake up in the morning in 2019, 2018, 2020, my resting heart rate used to be at around 75. Today, my resting heart rate drops to about 36, which, by the way, is the same resting heart rate as someone called Eliud Kupchoge from Kenya. Right. And he's, a, he's one of the elite marathon runners. Absolutely. So you can actually reverse aging and reverse aging takes hard work. It's a combination of fasting. It's a combination of breath work. It's a combination of high intensity interval training. And I do 10 minutes of high intensity interval training. I don't spend, I don't have the time to spend one or two hours in a gym. In fact, it's utterly unnecessary. So about a, about 10 to 15 minutes of high intensity interval training, but a cold exposure is magical. And when I talk about a cold exposure is have a warm bath but take it to the cold and the cold ramps up your immune system. It ramps up your metabolic activity. The brain does not like the cold. So you're overriding a signal from the cold. And by the way, what it does, it gives you a rush of dopamine. So I get right. the effect of dopamine for 16 to 18 hours in a day. You get the same rush of dopamine by, you know, having a mitai, having a barfi or something, but that's yes. for about five minutes. But over time, it's like the law of diminishing returns. You constantly need more and more and more. And therefore, you become that addiction to sugar takes place because you are getting that signaling of, of dopamine. Right. You can Absolutely. actually make and, it and, all I mean, back. And what I'm trying to say is, yes, anybody, anybody can. You know, tell us about the comments that you've been getting. Your videos have gone viral. I've uh, seen everyone from Anand Mahindra to Sangeeta Reddy commenting on it. Eric Solheim as well. Uh, tell us about what you felt when you read those comments. Uh, you know, and because health and fitness is something that is a global concern, it's not just an Indian concern now. How did you react to these, uh, this outpouring of uh, expressions from all your uh, friends, colleagues and well-wishers? You know, what I realized over these years of COVID, when the world suffered, the entire world suffered, you know, uh, people saw what the consequence of poor health is, the, the impact of COVID has created an economic crisis that rivals the Great Depression of the 1930s. It, it ruptured families who could not even attend to funerals uh, and, and, and uh, cremations because, because of that. But what it showed was the, not just the fragility of the human race, our health systems, but the fragility of the way we are living our lives. We are, right. you know, the, the consequence of the way we are living. And who right. knows what is the next pandemic looming out there, yes. which would be far more deadly at higher velocity. Right. I genuinely believe that my purpose as a United Nations civil servant, as an international civil servant, is about the sustainable development goal. Right. Sustainable development goal number three is about universal health coverage. What does universal health coverage mean? It is about good health and well-being. And that's why I quoted Herophilus to say that that is the foundation for social prosperity, for family foundations, for communities, for nation states to progress. Now, as individuals, because it's not just governments who can ensure good health. Ultimately, it is up to us as individuals, whether we want to smoke, drink, consume lots of sugar, it's an individual choice. But right. it is also an individual choice to have good health. I'm a father. My son is 13 years old. I want to be there for him, fit as a fiddle. I want to make sure that I'm with my colleagues. I'm in a state of fitness and well-being so that I can portray that sense of fitness and well-being around me. So I actually feel that I have a purpose in life. Having right. seen, lived in about 13 countries prior to China, I have seen how poor health systems can really have such a negative impact. I've seen it in my own home with my father who had a stroke and was bedridden for seven years. I don't want to be in that situation ever. So I have taken charge of my health and I realize the consequence it has been by yes. taking charge of it. I hope I'm able to spread that message. I believe the greatest gift one human being can give to another is the knowledge of good health. The knowledge of good health and you've given us so many lessons uh, there, uh, Mrs. Chatterjee. The snow yogi himself telling us his life lessons and his secret of a, a 60 year old man who looks, uh, who has the health of a 30 year old. And this is huge for uh, Indians who are struggling with uh, ill health, who, who are addicted to sugar and they have all kinds of lifestyle disorders. But thank you very much, uh, Siddharth Chatterjee, for joining us this evening on the News 9 Plus show and telling us Thanks. the secrets of the Snow Yogi. Thanks for watching. My pleasure. My pleasure. Good to see you, Sandeep. God bless. Streaming on News 9 Plus.
Internet news is now content. Subscribe and get free vouchers.